Hello everyone, today I will be going over one of the most sought after builds to do in Elden Ring, which is the Bleed build. This set consists of proccing bleed damage commonly, to the point where you will be able to melt most bosses quickly and efficiently while maintaining a high defense so your attacks won't be interrupted. This build will be split into three different sections depending on how far you are into the game, capping to levels 50, 100, and 150. The katanas I will be using are completely optional, as you can change your weapons at your will, since bleed will stack with arcane on most if not all weapons that do bleed damage. One of the easier katanas early game that is sought after getting is the Nagakiba, as it has long distance to cover for early bosses, but the Uchi katana is just as good and you will not have to kill an NPC if you don't want to, to do the questline. For personal preference, I run the Nagakiba and Uchi katana early game, as you can start stacking your blood build immediately for high damage output. As these two weapons both can be obtained in Limgrave, as well as being simple to get, they will be the main focus of this video. Since we now have the weapons out of the way, let's get to building your character starting from level 1 to 50. To start the build, I start my introduction into Limgrave by killing D to obtain the twin set. D is an NPC that does not have many rewards for doing his questline, and if you do not care about the lore to this character, he is one of the fastest ways to obtain a stable early game armor set. Killing D will not lock you out of handing death roots to the Beastman, or lock you out of achieving the Age of Duskborn ending. Coming to weapons, I tend to go for the Nagakiba as well as the Uchi Katana, which can also prove useful as both play out similarly with their playstyles. The only disadvantage for getting the Nagakiba so early is that you have to kill yet another NPC, being Bloody Finger Hunter Yura. This NPC does not have a particularly interesting questline, but still has some minor things you can miss out on like the Raptor of Mist's Ash of War. Using both of these weapons enables you to dual wield katanas, providing an extremely useful dual wield attack that can stack blood much quicker than a single slice. This attack also stacks with items and an Ash of War later on that completes the build. Alternatively, you can grab a Finger Seal and the Flame Grant Me Strength incantation, which grants you an additional 20% physical attack power that lasts 30 seconds. The last part of the initial build will come to Radagon Sword Seal and Erd Tree's favor, two amazing talismans to obtain early game that can prove useful up until reaching Lindell. Radagon Sword Seal can be obtained by taking the portal behind the Third Church of Merica and running down the bridge, taking a right turn, and using the Spirit Spring Jump to reach the castle. Here you can speed through the castle while avoiding enemies to obtain this talisman that I always take with me to endgame. I'll play a clip so you can see the route I take for reference, as it is easy to get lost and also pause for the intersections to run through.
Coming to Erdtree's favor, I will be doing the same as Radagon Sorceal, pausing at intersections that you need to take to reach it. Be warned there are scions at the end, so spend your runes if you plan on dying. Now that you have both the talismans, finish up by getting your golden seeds and sacred tears. I will be linking easy to follow maps in the description for finding these, as they can be hard to find for new players. Make sure any early game ashes you use contain the blood affinity, which can only be applied with a black wet blade obtained in Knight's Forsaken Ground after killing Radon. This next section requires completing Var's questline, which also grants you one of the staple items to your build. Do not kill him. If you are finding trouble running into people with bloody fingers during his questline, try moving areas to common bosses or lower level areas like the Limgrave Dragon or the Glintstone Dragon outside of Rey Lucara Library. Approaching mid-game will net you with some challenges as you may be underleveled depending on if you will be using the farming spot at level 50 to 100. Personally, I grind to level 90 killing the bird for 1 million runes since I still like to level but not be underpowered for later game areas like Lindell Capital. Once you're confident in your level, approach the section where the birds are located in Mogwin's palace to run into the three white mask clones. The third clone will drop you the set, but you only need the mask for this build. Also, do not kill Mog, as it will lock you out of obtaining this mask. The next item, Lord of Blood's Exultation, can be found in the Lindell Catacombs, which I will play a short video for how to reach starting from the Avenue Balcony side of Grace in Lindell. This is going to be the most difficult item to obtain, as the catacombs can be tricky. Hey, so recording error on my end, um, I just realized that all of my characters are in Lindell Capital of Ash, so I will be putting up an image on screen now where it'll show you where to run to, because all of my characters cannot access the well, so I will be showing the underground roadside side of Grace route that I took. So yeah, my bad, and back to the video.
Assuming you have completed the catacombs, you will now have all of the base talismans required to complete your build. An optional talisman can be obtained by killing Moog, the omen, in a different area of the sewers. That talisman is the Erdtree Favor Talisman plus one. The Ash of War Seppuku, which can be obtained after killing Morgoth and receiving the Dectus Medallion, can be found in the mountaintop of the Giants. This Ash of War is what's required to complete the build, as it will bump your damage output to its max potential. Reminder that you will need to go to Night Sacred Ground to apply this buff, as well as a Lost Ash of War to duplicate it for your other katana. Late game is the most fun you will have with this build, especially if you're playing with Mimic Ashes. This build late game can proc the most damage I have seen along with Bloodhound's Fang buffed, as the Mimic can also do the bleed damage and destroy with dual wield attacks. The only important thing to note when reaching for high levels like 130 to 150 is that you can cap out your Erdtree Talisman to plus 2 through Lindell, Capital of Ash after defeating Malekith. If you are trying to be tanky and need something to fill your 4th Talisman slot, try going for the Great Jar's Arsenal or the Crimson Amber Medallion plus 2. The Great Jar Talisman can be obtained north of Kaelid by defeating 3 knights, and the Crimson Amber Medallion can be obtained in the capital of Ash below the open sewer grate. Now that you have everything out of the way, let's look at some different types of armor you can run with this build. To start, the aforementioned Twinned Armor will most likely only last you until mid-game, where the damage scaling starts to hurt you more. Here you can obtain Lionel's armor, which can be mixed and matched with your current armor to meet your endurance requirements. Radon's armor is also easier to achieve, but has lower poise and overall lower defense than some of the tanky endgame armor has. The absolute endgame armor I always try to achieve is the Bullgoat set, which can be obtained fairly easy through Patch's questline. This armor is the heaviest and also provides the highest poise in the game, making do for a tanky katana build that makes you a slicing meat grinder. The last note of the video will be on what stats to spec into, but since players tinker with her build so often, I will not be making calculations but merely minimal requirements for common builds that apply to players. Don't forget that Arcane is what makes your bleed damage go up as well. This is extremely important for your specking. This is the end of the video. Elden Ring has been a wonderful game, and I couldn't help but upload a video going over one of the most fun builds in the game. I'm currently on normal game plus with it, and it has been amazing to shred everything with a 106 bleed on each katana. I have a few other builds I'd like to share in the future, so if you guys want those builds, please let me know in the comments. Comments. Thanks for watching and see you next time.